So like most kids who grew up watching too much TV, I really wanted somehow to be on TV uh, when I was about 11 years old. And one of my favorite shows back then was Mork and Mindy. And I came up with this idea of some uh, a way I could insert myself into the narrative just from watching the show because the thing is, <laughs> because people on Orc age backwards. So I came up with this, this concept where an elder from Orc could come down to observe Mork's progress and his activities on Earth and supervise him. And so I, I got my grandmother's old manual typewriter and I'm, I'm picking out this letter, one letter at a time. It took me about an hour and a half to do. And I suddenly, just very slyly, I thought, inserted into the letter, you know, I, I gave my pitch. Um, I somehow found the address of ABC. I think I just addressed it like Mork and Mindy, care of ABC, <laughs> Los Angeles. Because you know? it's like a letter to Santa. It'll <laughs> so I, I, I did my pitch and I kind of subtly, said, and by the way, you know, I'm about 11 years old myself and I've done a little acting. So, so I sent this thing off and uh, kind of just sat back and waited for the phone to ring. Um, <laughs> And it never did. But then a few months later, I read in a TV guide that the season three premiere of Mork and Mindy will feature a character played by an 11 year old boy <laughs> who's playing an elder sent down from Mork to observe oh. Mork's progress on Earth. Exactly my storyline. I don't have any, I didn't get the letter notarized or copied or anything because I had to type it all out by hand. It would take me another two hours to type it. Um, and the guy that, uh, you know, I looked at the end for my name in the credits, and I wasn't there. Uh, the guy that got my role, his name is... Uh, so I got his IMDb entry right here. It's Vidal Peterson is his name. And the last thing he did in 1993 was an episode of Deep, Deep Space Nine. Uh, I don't know where he is now, but if any of you know him, tell him I don't, I don't hold him responsible for this. Vidal Peterson. Hey, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here on behalf of every person that you have rolled over in the hip-hop business. That's right. We all know that every song written by Ludacris was really my first lyrics. All right, all right. You had to come in and take the credit. I don't know who you are. Okay? Oh. I've... Oh, you Ludacris don't? Ludacris wrote all those songs. Oh, did he? Real quick. Really? Because I'm pretty sure that Ludacris did not come up with the idea of Atlanta being where the players play. Pretty sure that was me. I walked into Atlanta and I said, this is where some players play. And I was right. So I wrote him a handwritten letter. Written letter. And I said, hey, Ludacris, this is, this is right. Ludacris does have an extensive collection of handwritten letters from fans. Does he? I thought they were just, you know, like... Weird letters that, you know, just for him. Are most of them written in glitter pen? Ludacris, Ludacris, you got another letter this this hour. Sorry, I know most of your job has been taken up by responding to fan letters. So much. <laughs> Can I just say, uh, Ludacris, when I got the job as your personal assistant, I thought you'd be that much different. You're very calm, very cool. You have reading glasses. Sorry, I don't want to... <laughs> No, it's fine. <laughs> Can I we you noticed on the top of the letter it, it says, Move, bitch, get out the way. <laughs> and then it goes on in other <laughs> glitter pen. <laughs> Anything interesting? Oh, uh, no, no. But if you could send my uh, song scribe in, um, having some inspiration. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be here in a second. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I have some inspiration. If you could put my name on that, it'd <laughs> be great. I'll get right to it. Oh, thank you. There's not a lot here, though, so I'm going to have to repeat some of the phrases for. <laughs> I've been thinking. Yeah. You're a mild better journalist? Yeah, I'd say so. Clearly a superhero. Clearly? Or okay, I don't undercover? Wanna, I don't want to say anything, but uh, I'm just a janitor. Okay. Here. 
Uh, or a daily planet. A super villain in disguise. That's actually what I'm hoping. I wonder if I can write myself into your story. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to be a super villain. Well, when I thought of it, it was a good idea, but now that you said it, it sounds stupid. No, 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 no. no. So you're, 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 vo you're, you're, you're vulnerable, right? So nothing can beat you. True. You know, what about like dirt and grime? You know, <laughs> like or like, 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 like the you know the the issue could be grime doesn't pay or something. Boom! It's I, Mixie. Oh, you gotta. Uh, sorry, it's me, Mixie Spellick. I'll come back. Totally cool. Totally cool. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> I wonder if he could have given him uh, evil magical powers. See, Boom! Yeah. I could have. It's just a thing. Get in a meeting. That's cool. Bye. No, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. But it's just kind of like, I feel like you start with janitor and like grime crime and the puns, and then it turns into it's like mold and spores, and better. then it's just a literal disease that people get from not cleaning shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're invulnerable from the outside, but in the inside, you know, you can get pneumonia just like the rest of us. <laughs> you know? It seems unlikely. Super pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> Superman! Among my many 13th dimensional powers, I now have a nasty mop! Oh, come on! Why am I a little bit in it? Time out, time out, time out! What? Time out? This was you, what you, this was like a, what you, what you? Listen, he's, he's got a better face for screen, you know, he's got a better line. Yeah, I'm from the 13th dimension. But you'll be coming to know, we did use this line. Watch out, my boy! Grind! Oh, come on! Oh, it's my no. turn! Oh, it's my turn! We have made the choices, alright? You agreed that we were going to wager all of our savings oh. on this epic game of Go Fish. It's a tough round for the World Championship Go Fish. <laughs> it's really heating up. Alright, look, uh... Can I use my lifeline? <laughs> the important thing to remember here, Tom, is that Fred will always use perceived vulnerability to his advantage. So That's all true. that sweat on his brow, he can actually generate on command. <laughs> you have an ace of spades. You're not going with twice, all right? It's my turn. I think I think it's my turn because I I was successful. All right, again. And now I get to go again. That rule card is in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not get a chance to read it before I enter this tournament. We had some fact checkers check. It's actually underneath the seat, but it's got stuck to the bottom of the seat. So when you try to reach oh, for it, yeah. you can't feel it. Classic move. <laughs> what do you want? A king? Hmm. Uh, no, I just took it. <laughs> you said you said I could, so I just went over. All right, good. And took took. I've got one card left. Can one I, card. Can I, can I peek a peek? No, you can't peek a peek. Can I sneak a peek? You can't sneak a peek or peek a peek. Can I squeak a peek real quick? You can't quick? squeak a peek, sneak a peek, or leak a peek. Or and peek. it looks like we've drifted into a Dr. Seuss play. <laughs> <laughs> the kid from school today said that Holly... <laughs> the kid from school today said that Hollywood wasn't real. In my context. I was told I was going to write a letter to Hollywood, like I do every March for Suits. <laughs> look, Ted, look, Ted, sit down, okay? No, when last time I sat down, you guys told me a bunch of gross stuff. <laughs> this won't be that gross. Have a seat. Just sit down. We've known this day was coming. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, son, back in the day, Hollywood was... I mean, it was it was real. There was a there was a real place was called Hollywood. A real place yeah, called Hollywood. Yeah, a magical place where people do magical things. Well, I no, mean, it, you're it, old enough to know. No, it was mostly just people doing things for money. And originally, <laughs> silently, <laughs> and so, then talking happened. So there was no Saint Spielberg. <laughs> I mean, yes, he existed. It's debatable whether or not he was a saint. <laughs> Dress you know, three happened, so. Well, he was only a producer on that one, though, so. <laughs> he, he also told me, don't get mad, he told me there's a Bollywood. That's ridiculous. Well, I, I don't know what your friend was telling you. On the other but side of the world, there's a Bollywood. Well, that is completely... And we are founded, we are a nation founded on Hollywood. <laughs> All right? Bollywood is just completely inappropriate. Who is, what public school are you going to? Bollywood. 
You've upset your mother. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. There's, a few, there's, there's no Hollywood. There's no you don't have to believe in Hollywood. If Hollywood's real, then you can just rest that it's real. And if it's not real, then... You know what? This summer, we're sending you to VHS. Oh, see? <laughs> there you go. I don't know what vacation, that is. Vacation Hollywood school. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna... They'll have good songs. It's mostly soccer. Yes. <laughs> am, I, am I still gonna get DVDs under my pillow anytime I watch a rerun? <laughs> well, you know what they say. Every time a rerun happens... You get a DVD. It's a very expensive <laughs> trade-off. Thank but. God for the dollar bin at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand... Oh, wait, you guys were the ones putting that under my pillow? Oh. Not producers? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did convince Wes Anderson to come one time. Well, he'll do anything. He'll do anything.